Well, hello and welcome. I'm Annette Reader from the biblicalnutritionist.com. And today I have been waiting for this video for years. And I literally mean years because I knew God would bring the right person in my life at the right time because there is a topic of interest that you need to hear about it. There is the topic of yoga. Today, we're going to share the truth about yoga, what the scary truth about yoga, and why every Christian should not be associated with yoga. Yes, that's what we're talking about today. I know it's in so many churches. It just scares me. And so we're going to talk about this today. This past week, I met a new friend, and I'm so excited about this friendship because I know it's going to go for a long time. And we have so much to work together about because we have the same interests, and that is biblical nutrition, biblical wellness, you know, just the biblical growth that we need to be seeing. And yet, this isn't where she's always been. She was in yoga and very much in yoga, but I'm going to let her share her story. So if you've ever wondered, should Christians be doing yoga? Today, we're going to answer that question. And the scary answer is never, ever, ever. <laughs> so, so that's the answer. Well, welcome, Sarah. It is a delight to have you on today. I know it was much more fun at the beach last week, but still, everyone needs to meet you and understand your story about yoga. So welcome and tell us, first of all, where you're from, and then we'll go into your story. Okay. Yes. Thank you. I'm so happy to be on here with you today. Um, so I live in a small beach town called Corolla, North Carolina. We are located in the Outer Banks. Um, I've been here kind of off and on for about 18 years, but originally from Hampton Roads, Virginia. Thank you. Now, just go ahead and tell us what started your yoga journey? What brought you into yoga? What, why did it interest you? Let's start with that. Let's start. Let's go back to the beginning. Yeah, for sure. Um, it was something about the physical aspect that I was intrigued with. I liked how they kind of um, dissected some of the shapes and the things. And it was, I was always into sports, but this was a whole other element, I guess. And I think what the, the underlying thing was, it brought in a whole spiritual realm that I was unaware of more than just the physical. I thought I went for physical and I was getting more than that out of it, which I thought felt nice at the time <laughs> until learning later on what it was all about. Um, but I was looking for just something extra for the physical and I guess the mindset. Um, let's see. So I guess I had been practicing off and on or going to these classes. Probably, I don't know, maybe in, in my early 20s, I'd imagine, um, where I was kind of getting into it pretty much daily. And I went on retreat, retreats. I went to Costa Rica and did stuff. I spent a month in India and the whole time I was, I guess you would call a lukewarm Christian. You know, I, I went to private Catholic school, which is a whole other thing too, but I was always aware of God. I always believed in God, but I didn't always, uh, I was never sold out. You know, I was baptized, but I had not been born again yet. <laughs> if that makes all that makes sense. Um, even when I went into India, I still brought my Bible and I brought some Holy Spirit books with me. You know, and that was when I was kind of getting, I had been going to BFA and going, learning more about the Lord um, and learning more about my walk with him. But I was still pulled into this whole spiritual realm and this fitness realm. But even when I was in India, there were a lot of temples that I never went into because I could feel the different presence. You know, and I was never one to be like, I don't want to go into these places, but I knew something wasn't right. Um. And I think in conclusion, I was just mainly looking for, not realizing, looking for a higher source or a higher power, even though I kept relating it back to physical health or physical wellness. So you would say you were a Christian and you said you even took your Bible with you to India. <laughs> and so you didn't see that there might be something different about yoga. You just were looking for the stretching. And then when did you realize there's, there's actually more to this than just the physical. When did that start to, to show itself to you? The exact moment, I don't remember, but I definitely think that was probably leading up to going to India. You know, why would I bring these other books if I already, you know, yeah, why would I bring all the other things if I knew that there was something else? You know, there's got to be 
Um, yeah, I'm not even quite sure when that whole all came in. And maybe Cindy and I have had discussions over that before I even went. I don't honestly don't really remember. Um, I just knew too, you know, when I first started, I was going into all of um, the chants and the Sanskrit and, see, and speaking a lot of that um, Hindu language, not realizing that you're worshiping all these false gods, not realizing you're awakening up all these false spirits, which are demonic spirits. <laughs> um, you know, and I feel like a lot of the people now that I talk to think like, oh, well, it's just you're just doing yoga. Yeah, but, you know, we're supposed to be yoked with Christ, not yoked with the world. And if you break down the term of yoga, Y-O-G means a yoke. <laughs> so, um, I don't think I really realized I got into the heat of all this demonic stuff because all I wanted to do was to feel good about myself and to enhance my own personal um, stretching and strengthening my overall wellness and help others. And not realizing the whole time I'm leading in all these demonic realms. And I guess more or less it's just a new age witchcraft if you really get to the bottom of it, you know. Um, I feel like that really hurt the worst of realizing that I did more harm than I thought I was helping everybody. <laughs> yeah. And and I, I love how you said it. It really is new age witchcraft. And but but here's the comment. But I'm just going for stretching and I feel good. Yeah. How do you address it? You kind of just did share about that, but, but address it again. I'm just going for stretching and they'll even play Christian music in the background. So when you're going through, um, you know, certain postures and a typical quote unquote yoga class, you're going to go through like these warrior series, which is very, very common, you know, and I've done it, but, you know, obviously um, those warrior series, if you break it down to the Sanskrit, your Virabhadrasana, that is a, is a demonic spirit, you know, so you think that you're going through the postures, but you're actually worshiping, you're doing these movements to worship those gods, you know, and they don't think about, it. well, I'm just moving my body. Well, no, you're awakening up those spirits. So you're getting a, like a false feeling from these demonic, from the demonic realm which is allowing you to feel good. And it's not coming from the right source. And do you believe when someone goes, they're just, they're like, they're playing Christian music in the background. I'm just doing these stretches. Does that lead to more um, in-depth yoga experience? I think so. And did you teach yoga? And did you teach yoga? Yeah, for um, over a decade. All right. <laughs> you can imagine all the whole demonic realms, you know. Yeah. And again, I didn't realize either that Christians can have demons. I didn't realize that. Um, you know, I believe in God. How can that? You know, but I've always believed there's, you know, there's God, there's the enemy, there's Satan, whatever you want to call him. Um, this is the so two sides to everything. You know, Satan always has the counterfeit. So whatever God has created and blessed, Satan's going to come up with something else. So I believe that we're supposed to move our bodies. You know, I think God wouldn't have created us so articulate of all these little things that we're not supposed to be stagnant beings. Um, but of course, Satan has to pervert that and mess it all up. So I think there's a way to move your body without, you know, all the extra nonsense, if you will. Yeah, without the worshiping of yeah <laughs> other guys right exactly. right yes exactly and so you were very much into yoga you were teaching yoga could you see the progression in people's in their lives as they kept coming to your classes how they were they were getting more and more into the yoga yes for sure and how did that change their christian walk could i mean or do you know you know, a lot of people that I have, I think they're all different backgrounds. I think some are probably Christians, but most of them, they're probably not sure. They're probably, they're lost, you know, and that's very common. You know, I was too, and I'm still on the route, you know, um, and I even switched around too of like what I was playing. I went from playing these Hindu yoga songs and I still slowly kind of transitioned to either instrum instrumental or Christian worship songs, you know, but then I'm like, Oh my gosh, what are my students going to say when I stop telling them namaste at the end of the class? What are they going to say? I'm not going to have, you know, but again, that was me 
going out on faith. You know, if I'm supposed to be helping people the right way, God's going to bless it. And I have to have that faith in me to give it to him and let him help me with my walk, you know? Exactly. And I have to practice what I preach, you know? <laughs> I'm going to be a hypocrite if I'm doing one and saying another, you know? So it was uh, it was interesting, and I'm kind of going off the path, but it's um, it was more of a shock and amazement of how all of the students that I work with reacted. I thought they were all going to get upset with me. And I have had so many compliments over the past couple of years now of, you know what, Sarah, we don't really care about all that Hindu terminology. We don't really care, you know, to be quite frank, a lunge is a lunge. Why do you have to attach a spirit to it? Why do you have to call it some fancy word? Call it what it is. You know, we can still, again, move our body and do it in a healthy way without adding the extra stuff. Um, and it was really nice to hear or refreshing, I guess, um, to hear the students chime in at different times of just saying, you know what, we really enjoy the class more without the extra stuff, which I never expected to hear from the ones that even the ones that are Christians, the ones that aren't. Yeah, that that's a great response. And, and I really believe most people are at, at in their heart. They just want an exercise. They just want to stretch. They just want to feel good. But yet every single element of yoga is against God. And it is for Satan. Would you agree? Yeah. So you can't separate the two. If you're doing yoga, it is what it is. You can't try to dress it up. You can't try to put scriptures all over it. It is what it is, correct? Yeah. Yeah. And so what have you noticed in your life since you've stepped away from yoga? You're still doing training and exercise with groups. So that's amazing. And your people love it. What Mm -hmm. have you personally noticed by walking away from being, you know, um, being set free from that? What have you noticed? I have more fun teaching. (laughs) Um, I feel like there's a lot less pressure. I feel like I'm more often like um, it's more authentic. I feel like I'm just, I'm just real with them, you know, and a lot of like, and breaking free from all of, and I guess it was just the, the, the bondage, you know, breaking free from a lot of that spiritual chains. I put too much pressure. I guess maybe it was in the demonic realm or the spiritual realm where I feel like I had to either, I don't know, to maybe please those spirits or do the right thing for those, you know, um and now i don't have that i teach how i teach i crack some jokes we're supposed to sweat get our heart rates up move our bodies and be free about it you know and i feel like there's just there's just a freedom about it you know and i never thought that like i never would have thought i was teaching a chair class like i just did you know we used our weight we moved our bodies we balanced we stretched and um it was awesome you know and you can still do that still serving the lord and honoring christ Right. And what has changed in your walk with the Lord when you realized that what you were doing was wrong and now that you are set free in Christ, what has changed there? Um, I guess my faith has increased with him, you know, and being more bold, you know, I think before I bet most of my students, they thought I was a very kind lady. They didn't probably know my whole, and you don't talk about, we don't talk about politics. We don't talk about religion. we We don't talk about these things, but if you're a Christian, you're supposed to, God never wants us to be silent. We're supposed to voice our, our things, you know, and there's a way to do so. So, and I've, I've told them all too, like, listen, I'm a Christian. You know, I believe that Christ died for my sins. And this is why I'm going the way that I'm going. Um, so I think that God gave me a, a, more of a boldness to be able to speak up and, and to speak what I believe, you know. And so I guess my walk has just been strengthened over the past few seasons. That's what we would expect to happen. Right. So if someone were to come to you and say, hey, our church is going to do Christian yoga, what would you tell them? I would tell them that um, that's interesting <laughs> um, because you can't have the two together. You know, either you're a Christian or you're going to do yoga. You really can't mix um, the two. You're going to be yoked with the world or yoked with Christ. So there's no, you know, I would definitely decline that for sure that they, they should, I would suggest that they should not do that. Well, I just want to thank you so much, Sarah, for joining us. And it was a delight to meet you at the beach. And I look forward to getting together more often. And at some point in time, I would love to have you to be part of the biblical wellness ministry. If God brings that together, that would be fabulous. Absolutely. What God has done in your life is what he wants to do in everyone's life. And that is to transform us, to, to have, let us celebrate, let us enjoy 
the body that he's given us, but also the wellness, the spiritual and the physical wellness. And that's what you have. You have the spiritual wellness because you walked away from all of the other gods and you walked toward the open arms of our Lord and Savior. Right. So, well, welcome. And it was a delight to have you today. Thank you so much for being a part of this and and sharing with people that there is hope Mm -hmm. and churches can remove Christian yoga from their churches. Never should have been there in the first place. Needs to be removed. And we need to reclaim the church. Mm -hmm. It is only for God. And there's only one God allowed in the church. There's only one God allowed in my heart. There's only one God allowed in my home. And as we're talking about at our retreat coming up, it's called the Biblical Wellness Retreat. And our theme is Reclaim. And just like you did, you reclaimed your life for the Lord. You reclaimed your ministry for the Lord. You reclaimed your whole store and your fitness studio for the Lord. Right. And that's what we're going to talk about at the retreat. How to reclaim our health, how to reclaim our relationships, how to reclaim our future. And it's so packed. So for all of you watching, I hope you can join us at the Biblical Wellness Retreat. If you're watching this after the retreat has ended, please go to biblicalwellnessretreat.com anyway, sign up for the email list to get notified of our next retreat. This is going to be a growing massive movement across the United States because I know just like most of you, you're tired of the noise. You're tired of Google telling you what to do. You're tired of the media and the politicians telling you what to do. We just want one God telling us what to do. And you need to get away for three days and then reclaim your health physically and spiritually. Turn off all that outside noise and just listen to the Lord and the teachers that we have there. And it is going to be amazing. So I don't want anyone to miss it. And for the rest of you, thank you for watching and letting me share with you God's recipe for excellent health, which always includes three ingredients, help you be confident in the kitchen, confident with your health. And most importantly, confident in understanding how much God loves you with an everlasting love. And he's loved you from the moment of conception. And he designed you exactly the way he wants you to live the most prosperous life. Thanks for watching. Hello, I'm Annette Reeder, the Biblical Nutritionist. And I'm excited to personally invite you to our Biblical Wellness Retreat, October 3rd through the 5th. In 3rd John, it says, I pray you may prosper and be in good health. Well, today's families are struggling with cancer, diabetes, autoimmune issues, viruses, learning issues, infertility, and so much more. Where is the answer to being in good health? In John 15, 16, it says these words, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. I know you're praying for answers and I know you're praying for health. Well, my team and I are here to help you see the answers that God has given the foods that help the body to heal, the design of the cells, and why different foods bring healing and other foods do not. We even have Dr. Jay Hitson coming to share about the inside view of the blood and why that matters so much in our body when we're healthy and when we're not. All of this is to bring you answers that you're praying for at a retreat so you can have fun, you can learn, you can spend time praying, but also we always have fun, food, and fellowship. When you're ready to reclaim your health, join us at the Biblical Wellness Retreat this October 3rd through the 5th, and we have very limited seats, so please don't delay. Click the link down below.